Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of On The Paint Table. It's my weekly show where you see what I got done, what I'm working on, and what is coming up. So another big paint week this week. I painted some more stuff for my Sylvanath. I painted some more models for my Kings of War Vanguard Northern Alliance. And I painted half of Blackstone Fortress in like 36 hours. So yeah, I painted enough to play. <laughs> <laughs> which you can see today by clicking up here. You can watch the Let's Play for Warhammer Quest Blackstone Fortress. Uh, and of course, you can also see I've assembled and gotten primed the rest of the miniatures from the box as well. Let's check out what I got done and what is coming up. So here's my painted pile for this week. First things first, my half of Blackstone Fortress that I got done. Uh, I started, as I often do, with my favorite miniatures and worked my way backwards um, after reading the rulebook enough to see what I what was the minimum I needed to play. Now, luckily, um, the uh, the game plays with one to five players, so I was able to give it a shot on my own to learn the rules before I start teaching other people. And I finished the most what I thought were iconic miniatures. Um, so Grek the uh, Crute mercenary who's just an awesome and she's got like a robot eye um cool like like just hair bobs just a great miniature uh which i'll also probably be able to use in necromunda um my navigator who's got some great details there on his cape all in purple and gold really nice uh painted him up again all these were just airbrushed their base colors and then worked up from there uh janice who is the uh janice drake who is the rogue trader himself smoking his low stick there uh, with his big pelt on his shoulders and his rapier and an archaeotech pistol uh now i did base them all to match the rest of my 40k collection and here's ur 25 who is uh, masquerading as an imperial robot but is actually one of the men of iron the ais that turned against the imperium in the uh, age of darkness so probably my favorite miniature in the entire range really simple to paint but super fun um yeah there is the basing stuff you see in the in the sort of stock photography for this from workshop uh the basing was all made by them so that the bases aren't they're just regular flat gw bases and i've just put sand and grass in them because they're all having 40k profiles too and you can clip up click up in the cards and uh, and see the 40k profiles for this stuff too because i think it spoils some cool stuff in the future uh on top of that i painted the urghuls famous from the court of the archon for the dark eldar uh with their like crazy sniffy noses um airbrushed washed with some Leviathan purple and then blended back up for some highlights. Some Negavolt cultists who are some Dark Mechanicum guys, Slaves to the Abyss, uh, who are like crazy electrocution. They're basically electro priests, but but bad guys. Um, and then some some Trader Guardsmen, like real plastic Trader Guard. They're kind of just cultists, but with Laz guns and flamers uh, and a cool sergeant with like a chain sword and a pistol. Um, and yeah, and I just followed the color schemes in the box basically just to make it quick and dirty and um and worked most of it up from like a gray uh, just a base coat and then a gray airbrush just to give it some texture and then worked up from there the uh, spindle drones who are actual blackstone fortress constructs that are kind of like the, the caretakers of the place and they get more dangerous the more of them die um, or the more they notice you so they might just be wandering around fixing things when you're in the blackstone fortress and they wake up and start shooting you with eye lasers and stuff uh, and that's the minimum to play really you need eight guardsmen which is the maximum any one encounter of guardsmen can give you um, and then all of your spindle drones um your uh was it the these little guys, the Urgul, <laughs> Urgul's, and then the uh, the crazy flow guys, the um, Negavolt cultists, and that's your initial like lineup of baddies. So until you've played your first game and your legacy cards kick in, you don't have to paint anything else. Just your four favorite heroes, um, at least eight Trader Guardsmen, and then all of the the these folk, which isn't too bad. I mean, that's what twenty bad guys and four good guys, twenty four to forty four models, um, and you're ready to rock and roll play the game. I also painted up some more stuff for my Sylvanath because I'm playing some AOS tomorrow, my buddy Wee. Uh, I got a uh, another, I did the alternate pose basically, using the Tree Lord pose uh, to make the Tree Lord Ancient. So I got my second Tree Lord Ancient, I painted some bow Kronoth Hunters because I need some shooting support in this army, and an Emerald Life Swarm because the Spirit of Dirth is going to eat a lot of wounds, so I need him to heal some stuff back at the same time. Uh, and then finally, uh, I painted up a Riding Beast Frostfang Riding Cavalry. Um, for my Vanguard Kings of War troop, which is a big, cool support monster cavalry guy, which I got to use in my games last week against um, Travis. So yeah, a lot of pain this week. 24 plus six, 30 miles, 30 miles this week. And here's the last of Blackstone Fortress. So the rest of my, uh, my hero types, we've got Tad. This is Confessor Tad. This is Tadius, the, uh, the 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 like freaky missionary, um, and his um, his uh, novitiate basically, 
and she um, she carries the big mean weapons, the big stabby weapons, and he's got like a big club, and he has a bunch of like passive priestly stuff. He's kind of like the the cleric basically in the group. And then we've got the Eldar Ranger, who's super cool, uh, and is a Bealtan Ranger, which I will paint up in Bealtan colors. And then finally we've got and she, they're all in red plastic actually. You can see that shining through. And then finally we've got the twins, Ryan and Rouse, um, who are like little deserters from the guard who are just just trying to make a living. Just trying to steal all the apples and shoot people with the Barretts. They're basically, if Rocket Raccoon had a twin, they'd be Rocket Raccoon. <laughs> and that's the rest of the heroes, and this is the rest of the baddies. Uh, I need to start off painting the rest of, so like in order of importance, it's gonna be the, um, the these fellows, the, whatchamacallit, the Trigger Guardsmen, and then whatever I need to paint next. Uh, for my first fortress run, which, which is, I mean, it's not a lot left. It's what it's the heroes are kind of optional. I might paint one or two heroes, my favorite heroes, just for the next expedition. But certain of my heroes need to come back because they have clues, uh, and then whatever I need to, to to add to the fortress run. So the rest of the bad guys is three, seven, eight, nine, fifteen models. So not too bad. Fifteen more models, and I painted everything I need to play, uh, and I can just kind of paint heroes as I go. As I want to include new ones. And so you go on the paint table on the books, uh, 30 models painted. I gotta paint 15 more on my Blackstone Fortress. Baddies are all done, and then I can just kind of like enjoy myself painting the rest of the heroes as I go. Although heroes can die, so you wanna have them all in the wings because they're all in stasis. So watch the Let's Play if you wanna check out more about Blackstone Fortress up here, and you can also, if you wanna check out the 40K rules, um, click up here into the cards, and you'll be able to see my overview of what all this stuff does in 40K and what that could mean for the 40K universe going forward. So if you enjoyed that on the paint table, we'll see you tomorrow for Wizards and Wonders. Till next time on Ash, have we're good. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you uh, want to support the channel, of course, like and subscribe and hit the little bell below to get notifications of when I post future content. I do post stuff seven days a week. Uh, if you want to support the channel um, further, you can, of course, buy a t-shirt through Spreadshirts, um, buy a measuring gauge or objective markers from Death Ray Designs. Um, or, of course, most importantly, there is Patreon. Patreon is what makes all this possible. Uh, keeps the lights on, pays for the studio costs, pays for the equipment, model costs, and everything else. And most importantly, um, puts food in my kids' bellies and a roof over their heads. Um, uh, big thanks to everyone past, future who supported me. Uh, I do this stuff because of you guys, and of course, I will continue doing it as long as I can.